It's time for another Shop Shed project update. It's first week of November. I haven't posted about it for a long time. It's time. Let's go ahead and get into it. This is where we left off in my last update. I had just laid the road fabric out and got it all stapled into position. And it was then time to go ahead and put in the dead man. Now I've had a lot of people ask me what that is. It's these pieces of cedar 4x6 that are not the best looking pieces of wood in the world, but they're there simply to keep the sides of the pad from spreading when I start putting the gravel into the pad. They were pieced together, screwed in, screwed down, and then holes drilled and two foot rebar stakes driven through them, securing them to the ground. And here we have the first picture of the dead man installed. Now I did go ahead and bring in a few wheelbarrows full of gravel, mainly to cover a seam to keep the uh, wind from blowing the road fabric all over the place, but also to provide a base for the skid steer to be able to get over the dead men. And then I had to clear a little bit of the old sod out of the way and start bringing the gravel back with the skid steer and just start building up a ramp along the front edge of the pad as I filled in the pad with gravel. I knew there were certain areas I was not going to be able to get the skid steer into, so I went ahead and shoveled gravel over into those areas and kept raking it flat to kind of even it out as I added gravel to the pile. For those that are wondering, that piece of equipment that I'm running is called a Dingo. It's made by the Toro Company. And props to them, that is an excellent, very easy to use piece of equipment. Even if you've never run a mini skid steer or front end bucket of any type, you can be running that within the first few minutes with some confidence that you're going to be able to do it safely and effectively. For those of you who are into the numbers, by the time it was all said and done, I used just short of 10 yards of gravel to fill in this pad. It is an average of about seven inches deep, and this whole operation took about four and a half hours. So this is where we stand here at the end of the first week of November 2020. That's as far as I have gotten and I apologize for any background noise you're picking up. It is autumn and we've got autumn cleanup going on around me, trucks and chainsaws and leaf blowers and what have you. And as you can see the pad is covered with leaves from this ash tree in the neighbor's yard that are dropping right on it. <laughs> so that's great. What I have left to do is I still need to go get a plate compactor and compact down this gravel, but I'm not going to bother with that until I have the shed on the way. Speaking of which, I'm probably going to end up having to put this shed project on hold. It's a combination of the recent fires we had here in Southern Oregon, as well as the massive spike in the cost of building materials. If you've been to price a 2x4 or a sheet of plywood, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, prices have just skyrocketed, and to be blunt, I just can't afford to purchase right now. So this may have to be put on hold until spring, possibly this summer. Who knows? So that means I'm going to have to make do with what I have. 
So that's where we sit right now. If you'd like to continue to follow this series, I do hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Just as a reminder, this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session right here on my YouTube channel where we can discuss the Shop Shed project, uh, the Vectric software, CNC in general, anything you'd like to bring up. That's this afternoon at noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time, right here on my YouTube channel. And I'll put a link to that Q&A session down in the description box of this video. As a programming note, we're getting into the holiday season, and this is traditionally the time of year when I put this channel on hiatus, meaning I no longer post weekly videos until after the new year. It gives me time to focus on making gifts for friends and family. I will, however, continue to host the live Q&A sessions every Sunday at the same time, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. That's a good reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel now so you won't miss a live Q&A session. Hit that little notification bell right next to the subscribe button, then you'll get a notification every time I post a video and every time I go live. So I hope to see you this afternoon for today's live Q&A session. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Y'all take care.